Welcome back to Bayona's RC World. Today's video, we are going to start on the Top Flight P51D Mustang, 60 size kit. It's gonna be awesome. I'm looking forward to this actual build. And so with that said, excited to get into this. So stick around, sit back, relax, enjoy the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. And if you are, I surely appreciate you. So without further ado, Let's get cracking into this actual build of the Top Flight P51D Mustang. All right, guys, welcome to the build. The build of the Top Flight 60 size P51D Mustang. All right, so as you can see right now, we got uh, the right-hand side of the horizontal stabilizer pretty much all assembled and glued. All right, so I'm going to take you along on the left-hand side. All right, now, to make life a lot easier, all right, when you pop out all your ribs, I suggest, and based on the manual, all right to go ahead and true it up as much as you can right do not alter the uh, airfoil of each rib all right but at the same time go ahead and mark out your tabs all right where the tabs will be cut off that will assist you later on during the build when it's time to cut those tabs off when everything's all sheeted uh gives you a guide basically Alright, because if you don't do that, you end up, you won't be able to see it good, and you end up cutting and just whatever you're trying to do, and you're not going to get the right airfoil. Alright, so I suggest to go ahead and follow the uh, tab marks. Alright, go ahead and outline it so that you can see a visual reference, you know, type deal. And then also, to the best of your ability, Find your center of each rib and draw your line. Also, for your trailing edge, find your center. And also, for your leading edge, find your center. All right. Uh, all this will make your assembly process much easier so that everything, just, just based on the visual reference, you can ensure that everything is getting centered when it's all being put together. All right. And so, on this part right here, the first step is to basically pin down rib number six and rib number two down on your board so that you can go ahead and adhere your training and leading edge to the structure. And then we'll go ahead and add in ribs three, four, and five right after. On this as well, each rib. It has a slight taper on the leading edge area if you can see in the plans here right you got a you got a little wedge or it's, it's kind of going in an angle all right now each rib is not tapered in the front leading edge to that degree at all all right so you're gonna have to sand it just slightly to that taper so each rib in the front you're gonna give it a slight taper and so what I'm gonna do is just grab the sanding block and just run my sanding block just like so just two swipes really it's all you need it's just to get a nice flush basic mount like that so that you have more rib attached instead of glue all right so we're gonna do that to each rib going down all right the other thing is how do you attach this to your your board? So many different ways. People have got magnetic building boards and all that other stuff. My board, my building board, technically, is on a hardwood surface, but the actual board on top is your typical water-resistant gypsum board or you know a drywall. All right, and what it does is allows you to go ahead and push your t-pins through to hold your parts down yet it's not hard you know like 
it doesn't go in that easy but it, it goes in all right compared to the uh trying to push your teeth in through plywood all right way different at least with the um board the gypsum board or drywall it's just easy to just push straight down like that all right so to start everything off on here i normally what i do is i use my little um triangle type deal not triangle but a square all right and i'll go ahead and pop this on there also check in the training edge to ensure that it's all right so this is what i'm doing here i'm holding the training edge at the back you know to build this would give me a guide as to when where to place my actual rib while at the same time i'm doing that i'm making sure it's 90 on the table at the same time it's in line with the actual drawing on the plans and then from here we're going to pin this down on the plan and where do you pin it well i got you got the two tabs at the front and if you were to push your t-pins through the tabs you might break your tabs right uh you can do it just be very careful and then go ahead and push your t-pin down all right that right there ensures that my front and the leading edge of the rib is down holding onto the plan and then now we're going to go ahead and situate the training edge area you can go ahead and put this in the opposite direction right or you can just go ahead and leave it on the same side as long as everything stays at a 90 degree like so you'll be okay and then make sure that your training edge is still aligned all right and that your leaning edge will fall right in place you know, all this is gonna make or break your foundation because remember rib number two and rib number six is gonna set your set the stage for everything else all right so if your rib number two is not completely touching the building board and the building tabs and rib number six is not completely flush and also the tabs not touching anything raising up or whatever your whole structure after you glue your training edge and leading edge, you're going to either develop a warp into your, your horizontal stab, it's going to be crooked, or you're gonna, not going to have enough material in certain areas, etc, etc. It's going to be a disaster. All right. So to prevent you from having those issues, take your time, get S2 and S6 properly situated over your plans, ensure that you got all your center lines done prior to, all right? and go ahead from there you can start gluing everything together all right make sure everything is 90 degrees as well all right so you go ahead and take care of this same thing trying to keep everything centered on your plans i know this sounds you know very basic to a lot of the uh builders out there who's been doing this for more than a day but we do got some guys out there who's just starting getting into the hobby all right and probably their first kit which is you know not surprising these days but uh yeah just take your time do right the first time guys there's no rush nobody's rushing you to build your plane all right the only one you're going to be fighting is yourself all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this. We got everything there, setting the stage for everything else. Now, there will be times where you break your tab. That's not a problem. Just go ahead and, you know, put a drop of CA on the tabs. No problem at all. Just basically glue it back on, and then when it's time to cut it off, you just basically cut it off. Simple as that. Right. 
so we can use 90. Got a different way in securing your um, your structure to your plans, then by all means put it in the comments below. All right, see this uh, tab right here broke, so you want to put a drop in CA right on that tab just to keep it together, and then we're just gonna find another spot. Sometimes you could use the whole the whole rib. Just like that. Be sure and everything is still 90. There you go. Making sure everything is still straight. Just like that, guys. Alright. Now, I totally forgot to put the bevel on the front of rib number six. No problem. Just basically run your sanding block very lightly right at the tip. That's it. Alright. And so, from here, what we're going to do is we are going to glue our leading edge right up to the front just like so all right now since we got all the center lines you can just match it all up just like so making sure it's touching the other side as well all in line just like that and you can basically start gluing all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a drop in CA, making sure, just double checking everything. Just a little thin drop of CA, just like so. All right, so we got that. We'll come back down here. Make sure that all your ribs are still touching the damn table. Mm -hmm. Did I say damn table? Sorry, guys. Okay. Make sure everything is touching the table. The building surface. Out of your CA. Right, so, CA, tight bond, whatever adhesive you're using. Alright? Same thing with the rear. The training edge, same thing. And you gotta also remember, do not, you, the, the training edge is basically thicker at the center and then it thins out towards the, uh, the tip, linked, uh, the, the stab tips, all right? So this is one also reason why you wanna put your center line through there, all right? Because if you're going to try to do this without your center line and you're just gonna try to center everything you might have a little hard time and it might not be the same if you're gonna just eyeball it all right from both sides but by doing this you ensure that your uh, training edge is basically following the center line all right so the tip here is not going to be touching the, the build you know, counter so you're not building it flat like that onto the counter all right i've seen some people do that all right they they basically what they did was that when everything's up here like this they got everything flush on the top of the ribs like such all right and that will basically give you a different uh taper towards the end all right. so just make sure everything's all centered based on your tabs make sure it's touching all right, and you go ahead and add your NCA type bond 
medium CA, whatever CA you're using, or glue. Alright, and then from here, we're gonna just situate the training edge over here. It's kind of hard to see this way. So I'm just gonna do my best. Making sure that the tabs, make sure your ribs are still touching directly down. And then go ahead and add your CA. Alright. Now this is the start of the build of the Top Flight P51 Mustang. So all this is going to set your stage for the rest of the build. Getting everything the same way, you know, uh, just ensuring everything is built straight and true. All right. And then from here, we got room number three, four, and five. We are going to glue on there as well. So on here, ensure, and also make sure you get your taper right in the correct direction. All right. So I'm just going to. So one, two, that's all you need. You don't need to try to go go to town with it and stuff. And you're gonna really shorten your rib if you go too much. All right. So once again with this, make sure everything is 90 degrees. And just by double checking your lines like everything here is folding in play just make sure that your rib is over the plan make sure all your tabs are touching on both training edge and leading edge you go ahead and drop your CA or whatever glue you're using alright same thing we're going to double check the front and right where it rests right now, currently, everything is in line with all my lines. All right. So my leading edge line that I made earlier is in line with the rib. My rib is completely touching the countertop or the, uh, the build table. Now you want to go ahead and continue kind of holding these ribs down because you don't want it to be uh, popping up anywhere because if your ribs are popping up all over the place uh, you will build a building uh, build in a twist or you know change your um, airfoil all this is just old basics guys And listen to what I'm just saying or just ignore it. it don't matter you build how you build because I'll build how I build I just want to bring you along on the journey of what I'm doing all right hopefully it, it helps some of the new guys out there I know it probably won't help uh, you guys have been building for a long time
Hm? like that you got all the ribs minus s1 on there all right and then from here we're gonna go ahead we got the uh, stab joiner we also got your uh, step training edge joiner all right, that will go in between s2 and then you got your you know, stab joiner right there and then your two s1 ribs will get fitted in between that in between the rear training edge joiner as well all right so it's going to get glued in right now we are about to glue the top sheeting to the horizontal stab all right now i didn't record doing the uh the sheeting only because if you've been following me from the cessna to the p40 preparing the sheeting and all that is all in those videos all right it's the same thing all right guys now if you want to go ahead and see that i mean just click in those videos go to that part you know doing the stab and everything you see exactly how i prepared the sheeting and you know glue them all together get it all nice and smooth and how i also apply it onto the stab i'm going to show you how i do that here as well but just for you know uh, time purposes no need to uh, continue doing the same thing over and over but you know it is what it is guys all right so with that said I got my sheeting all prepared I'm going to get my medium CA because that's the adhesive that I'm going to be utilizing is my medium zap you can use tight bond you could use whatever glue you want to use to adhere your sheeting to your structure all right uh, you can use a tight bond if you want all right if you're not pushed for time or anything and you you got weights to go ahead and weigh it down to ensure it's that uh, burst throughout the whole sheeting you know all that good stuff all right but in this case, I am just going to use medium CA. You can use thick CA if you want. All right. Uh, the downfall of utilizing CA is that you don't got time to reposition anything after you're done. Once you situate it down, you're done. All right. You try to pull it off, you're going to break something. All right. That's the downfall of that. So, like I always say in all the videos, well, at least in most, I always say basically measure 10 times, you know, and cut once always dry fit everything like I'm doing right now I'm dry fitting it making sure kind of build muscle memory here and see how everything goes before you apply any type of glue all right so I'm looking at this I'm like you know what if I were to put glue all up in here now and if I were to do this freehand put this down where am I going to start at do I just pop it down and what are the chances of it going crooked and if it goes crooked, let's say like this, now I got this exposed area right here. And if I was trying to pull this off with CA, good luck. You're going to be breaking things. All right. And so if you notice here, I got tick marks. I also got tick marks here. That's one way to do this. All right. You, we know that the center is right here at the joint. So what I can do from here after I got the glue down is just carefully match it up to those tick marks like such. Now, since it's already touching, this is already glued down. So from here, I can just go ahead and lay it down. I can get my T-bar sander and use this to push down on my sheeting. All right. To go ahead and get everything all nice and, and situated onto the ribs. All right. You can do it that way. You could do it where if you were to cut this directly to the edge of the, the training edge, you can put tape and you can actually fold this back like such. Put your glue, 
just drop it down all right so there's many different ways to do this all right so uh do what you feel comfortable doing all right so i'm gonna go ahead and do this i'm making sure everything is good to go all right all my ribs have been sanded you know it's been sanded flush with the leading edge leading edge towards the training edge all that everything has been sanded off camera all right okay there we go i have also if you're utilizing ca i'm not a really a, a, a main fan of utilizing kicker on like structures like this only because i know that at the end i'm going to be utilizing the same ca to put the uh, sheeting on so if you already kicked this with kicker i don't suggest you using ca because the minute you start laying your ca all over the place it's going to start activating you're just going to have globs of hard ca in these areas and then when you put your sheeting down it's not going to sit well all right so kind of look at it forward make sure if you're going to utilize your your kicker be mindful that you're not going to have that luxury um, if you're going to utilize the ca now if you're going to utilize let's say tight bond app you know to put the sheeting that's no problem all right that's the reason why i try not to use kicker in these type of areas i only use kicker when i really 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 have to all right Just like that. And the reason why I use my T-bar sanders basically to push down on my sheeting is so that I do not make any indentations or in you know, the waves and stuff. We'll try to minimize as much um, on the sheeting. All right. So the more you dis disperse your your pressure throughout in a bigger area. You keep your sheeting nice and straight. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm not really pushing so hard down that I'm gonna break the, the jig tabs underneath, but I am putting pressure to ensure a good bond between the sheeting and the ribs, trailing edge, and leading edge. All right. And then make sure all the way up the front because you know this thing has a little taper going down right so you want to also kind of push down on that front leading edge uh, not to crack it though just get that front to adhere good onto that uh front leading edge area pushing everything down here all right so good <clears throat> all right so we got that all right now for the opposite side all right you can put it together like this you can put tape right here you can flip this over this way 
and then when you're ready just basically come down and pop it down all right so you could do it like that or you could do the whole tick mark thing and do the same thing we just did what i'm not gonna do is i'm not going to add glue at this joint the center joint just yet until after everything is said and done then i will wick a thin ca right smack down that center all right that's just to keep everything nice and straight all right because if i put thin C i mean a medium ca there now and let's say i'm trying to align it and it gets stuck and let's say it's one is in and all that stuff you, you just yeah all that all right so just like so always practice your motion all right and yep that's what we're gonna do so from here you can use tape and today i got my ac off so it's kind of reason why we don't have any background humming and stuff however comma with well, that's it it's kind of hot in here so once i'm done with this i'll go turn that back on all right also when you do tape make sure it pivots just at that this seam area all right you see how this is all right because if you pull it further back you will end up misaligning this area so when you pop it down it might jump a little off all right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to lightly hold it up like this and then i will add all my medium ca all right Trying to keep all my CA on the dang freaking ribs. Sometimes, you know, just doing this. Uh, it is what it is. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and just plop this down. Just like so. Same thing. We're going to go ahead and utilize T bar sander to ensure we get good contact all the way around. Alright. all the way to the end, all the way to the front of the leading edge. All right, just kind of pushing it down slightly, just so you don't also break the sheeting as well. All right, so don't be too rough. All right. That's pretty much in a nutshell, guys. Just like that. Alright guys, so just like that. And then from here we can go ahead and uh, when we remove the tape, we can put thin CA right smack down the center. Just to ensure that uh, the center piece is also all taken care of. Alright, so this it's not one is not higher than the other. Alright. You can just run it. Just do this number to make sure everything is nice and smooth right there and then from here we'll just basically get your rag as well all right and we'll just add some thin ca to kind of glue this together That's it. Just like that. 
All right. So we are done with that. And so from here, what's going to be next, guys, is the uh, creation of the balancing tabs. All right. So here is the uh, sheeting. All right. All attached. And this is where, once again, like I said, on the front to make sure that all your sheeting has been pushed down. All right. All right. All right. Same thing here. Everything is all good. wipe a little bit of that CA off here just so we don't have a hard glob of CA all right just like that and we're golden all right so next basically we'll be doing creating the whole uh, balancing tabs here all right, and then we're going to cut this completely off right there and all that. So, and so I got um, this basic 1 8 uh, sheet of balsa from the Top Flight P40 kit. All right, and what I did was just pretty much made just a little cutout type deal. All right, put it right smack in there. Now, Got to make sure you know we follow the, uh, the plans, and so this basically is about nine sixteenth from the inside of this training edge to the inside of this balance tab wall here. All right, so nine sixteenth, and I say roughly this square is about the same width as that. So what I'm using this, I just shove this in right there, push it against that, and that's pretty much where mine will be at all right so just like on this side here it fits perfectly there and i'm going to do the same thing with this side all right so just pushing it down make sure it's all even and then from here i'm just going to add my thin ca okay, just to hold everything down That's that. So I got uh, my right and left balance tab um, base right now. All right, so we got that. We got that. All right, so this is basically all fitting perfectly right in there. All right. So that is my balance tab, the, the main wall there. And then now what we got to do is we got to create the actual the, the two inner wall here, right here. So based on the plans, look right here and right here. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and take that measurement as well. One inch. All right. So my wall here is gonna be about one inch open so I'm gonna measure from this rib in all right so from that rib to my wall is basically about half inch all right so from here to here half inch this is where this wall will be and then from this rib rib number six over is about quarter quarter inch Let's see what I'm measuring that first. 
And up here, we can also just do it like this. Right here, because we know it's an inch. Just like that. Let me go ahead and measure from here to here. And this. And this again, just to check. Seven sixteenths. So seven sixteenths. From here to there. Seven sixteenths. We got two, four, six, and seven. Not a problem. Cool. Let me just move that along again. Good. Check that. Okay. So the the counterbalance tab that's on the actual elevator is one inch in width. All right. And so for this opening, we're just gonna go a little bit over one inch. All right. So a one sixteen on each side wider which is pretty much where we're at right now all right 90 degrees you know and everything is all 90 because we don't want our tabs to look kind of off all right there we got that this side as well. This basic outline here to cut it. much closer to getting these tabs done. Well, at least the opening. Alright. Just like that. Just like that. Alright guys, so it's pretty much just like that. Alright. That will be pretty much our opening. And then from here, after we glue all, all this you know together uh, this right here will get cut out to include the sheeting so all that will get cut out basically a big notch all right so we'll go ahead and take care of that with the other side and just get it all nice and formed up and then we'll start gluing things together as you can see we got the trim tabs basically constructed here all right nothing special it's just basically taking one eight uh, balsa just blocking it up making sure that they're both even on both sides the same width the same distance for the opening all right and then I went ahead and I added a quarter inch um, or I think it's half inch Let me just double check here I'm mistaken a yeah, quarter inch uh, balsa in side here for the uh, hinge and this is the hinges that I'm going to be utilizing. I'm going to be utilizing the uh, Robart pin hinges, 1.8. And the reason I'm using that is also because since I got the trim tab, if I were to use the regular nylon uh, hinges, it's not going to be feasible because if it's going to be pretty much bunched up here. I'll end up putting one here. I try to center it here and I'll put one right here. It'll be so bunched up together. And so, uh, with utilizing the pin hinges, 
I can put one right smack over here, right here, and here, and that's all separated and spread apart evenly to include right here at this one, the block of the uh, stab tip, all right? We can put one right there. And that way we won't get no flutter or anything. This whole section, this whole elevator is basically hinged all the way to the tip to include past the uh, balance tab. All right. So that's pretty much the madness on that one. And uh, went ahead and like I said, put uh, an extra piece of material right in smack inside the uh, cavity there. So we'll have more area because if you didn't do that, uh, you're gonna just be basically be relying on this training edge, quarter inch training edge to hold all this uh, uh, hinges in there. So, more material, more uh, glue area, all right? And the balsa that I'm using, uh, real lightweight balsa, it's not heavy or anything, all right? So, that's pretty much that. I'm gonna go ahead and take this all off now. I'm just waiting for this to, to uh, the CA to cure. And then I will be sanding the airfoil, right? Getting everything all nice and even trued up with the leading edge, training edge, and the ribs. And then we'll go ahead and sheet it. All right. Also, the uh, opening here, I'm not cutting out until after I sheet. All right. So what I did was I took the uh, T-pin and I went ahead and from this inside here, punched right at the four corners all the way around that way when you flip this over you can see the outline where you will actually need to trim off all right all right so we got the uh, bottom of the stab i got the left hand side technically you can flip this over this is the top this is the bottom so this is the left hand side i got basically glued down sheeted all right so now we got to take care of the right hand side sheeting all right all the procedures have always been the same. Uh, very generous. Because we are dealing with the bottom of the stab. Therefore, we want to ensure that um, the surface, the sheeting, is really adhered to this. Because. Uh, especially the centerpiece because you gotta remember that this is gonna be uh, the sheeting is the one that gets glued down technically to the uh, fuselage right and so if you have it loose somewhat right here in the center then that means your stab is not going to be completely glued down all right and so here we go add any glue to the center here because we will do that with um, thin CA all right now since there's no jig tabs here all right I'm holding the back side flush this side is being raised up while I'm pushing down all right? and then instead of I, I kind of roll the stab as well all right so that I don't break it that's one reason and the other reason is so that we do not uh, develop any uh, additional twist or any type of twist to the, uh, the frame all right so we are not holding this down while we're pushing this side down because there's no jig tabs under here uh, so we're just gonna follow the airfoil when we're pushing all this down but we do not develop any additional twist Right, while we're pushing this down in the front, I am not pushing down in the back. All right, I'm just holding it down. As long as we get all the sheeting, basically, all do that. All right, so just like that, and then from here, the uh, front portion of the leading edge kind of just assist it to really glue down that sheeting to the leading edge without breaking the sheeting. That's for sure. What I'm doing right here is you can see right at this very front tip of the leading edge, right? We got that CA, you know, and the sheeting. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of bending that sheeting to ensure we get a good bond all the way to the front of that leading edge. All right? So just like that. 
All right, so we know that everything here is completely glued down. All right, all the way to this side, all the way over here, all the way to the rear of the, uh, the training edges. Everything is all nice and tight against the, um, the sheeting. All right, so we can do some wipe off the excess CA that dripping out of uh, or oozing out that way you're not cutting through a big glob of CA All right. All right. It. just like that and then from here we can go ahead and add um, your thin CA to the center piece here right. so push it down get this all nice and even with each other all right. just help it out a little without breaking anything all right. from here just go ahead mm -hmm. And just quickly wipe it off. We will basically trim all this, sand everything flush around the leading edge, and then we will go ahead and start cutting open our trim tabs that we just created. All right, and then we'll get the wing tip, I mean the, the blocks all shaped up. We'll get the um, Elevators basically shaped up as well as putting the uh, trim tab, or not trim tab, but the um, balancing uh, tabs there. All right, all right, guys. So we got the stab basically uh, sanded, trimmed. All right, so I got the training edge all trimmed up to include the side and also the front leading edge. All right. And so all we gotta do from here is basically contour or shape the leading edge to match the plans, right? As far as the plans are concerned, we have to get it matched up right. And then from there, we will start, um, we'll put a center line on the wingtip blocks or stab blocks. And then we'll center it on there, glue it in, and then we'll go ahead and get that all shaped up as well. So what we're going to be doing here is pretty much cutting out the balancing tabs right here on the corner. Went ahead and I cut the elevators already, right? So all we got to do from here is do the final shaping. I also blended the horizontal stab tips, all right, with the sheeting to include the training edge and leading edge. All we got to do is get the final uh, roundness on the tips all right and uh, yeah and so from here we are going to open up these things so let's go ahead and put this to the side Got that opened up. Now it's just time to go ahead and just sand all that flush. And we're good to go. All right. And then from there, <clears throat> we will go ahead and add to the elevator as well. All right. We will add the um, tab that will fit directly in there, giving at least a 16 inch of space all the way around all right and uh then we'll go ahead and um start sanding everything to its uh close to final shape i'm not going to completely sand it to its final shape uh or 
into you know uh, the final finish because it's still a long way until we get this mounted onto the, a fuselage and all that all right so this is pretty much where we're at and um, the stock for the trim tab that is not included in the kit all right so um, have some 1-8 balsa sheets laying around somewhere I know you know if you're a builder you got been building kits for a while you have a stash all right and then also the uh, the, the tab blocks and stuff um, pretty much uh, I don't actually have blocks that big so I'm gonna make it out of you know like these balsa pieces and stuff so how I made the uh, just want to go ahead and talk about the uh, balance tabs here all right so the uh, instructions basically do not show you um, how or give you step-by-step -step instructions besides um, here in step 20 just showing you this little piece right here if you want to go ahead and uh, uh, do this all right that the materials are not included but it'll show you exactly um, the size 18 balsa uh, to facilitate the additional uh, piece the scale counterbalances right and then it refer to your actual plans right here it'll have a little outline to show you the exact out, um, uh, placement of this dimensions and all that stuff all right so what we did basically is just measure the distances you know and placed your own uh, one eight piece balsa right and if you've been building for a while you got I know everybody has a like a box or a stash of balsa uh, scraps and all that stuff around so it uh, doesn't take much to um, take care of this all right now as far as the actual balance tab itself the one that you see right here unfortunately I do not have blocks of balsa all right uh, I don't have any real thick ones like this and so what I had done was as you can see right here I made my own and what I did was I just utilized this um, uh, 316 by 4 inch by 36 inch long balsa um, sheet that I actually have right this one I was trying to draw I was trying to do a chuck plane but um, yeah so what I did was I just cut it I measured the opening right and then I just cut it I stacked glued and stacked them together uh, to make the block just like such all right as you can see one two and three all right and then from there I uh, went ahead and glued it on all right I did not bevel the elevators yet all right keeping it nice and flat right here on the leading edge that way you can securely tape this on there like this that way you get the straight you know elevator uh, because uh, if it's beveled right now you would have to make a notch cut the bevel out here right and then you would have to kind of keep centering it just to uh, sand your uh, balance tab properly all right and so with this uh, from here we're just gonna go ahead and sand this right to the proper uh, contour now with this uh, utilizing the balance tabs you kind of change up the placement of the uh, hinges all right now in this kit it's showing uh, CA hinges and there's three on each elevator one two and three all right so if you put this here you will notice that the third one here is right at that balance tab so you would have to shift everything right and so uh, since I'm not using CA hinges on here, I'm using uh, Robart 1 8 inch um, pin uh, hinges. I already installed blocks in here, as you saw earlier. And uh, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have one pin hinge right here, one smack in the middle here, one right here. So all three here will be evenly spaced. And then I will put one 
So there'll be four hinges on this piece, and then one will be right smack right here at the edge, all right? We'll still have enough material to go ahead and put a hinge right here, and all that will still be good. That way, when when the uh, elevator's deflecting, uh, at least this end right here will be secured. Because if this wasn't secured, you gotta think about it. You got three here where it's pivoting on the hinges and all this back over here has no actual connection to the elevator that you might end up having flutter or whatnot. And I'm not saying you will, I just do not want to have. All right, so I will make sure that this whole length of this elevator is connected somewhat to this stab, all right? So once again, we'll have one here, 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 and one right here at the tip. We cannot put it right here because this is where rib number six is at. So we will be drilling it technically in this block right about here, all right? So that's where I'll be drilling my one eight uh, hole for my um, robot hinge all right. uh, for hinges on the elevator all right and then eventually you got your torque rod goes right in there uh, that connects both elevator halves together to move at once all right so that's what we will be doing so I got this side already basically sanded I need to go ahead and take care of sanding this trim tab or balance tab to basically be just like this, all right, on both sides. And then from there, we can go ahead and start um, shaping uh, this to the plans. And then we can go ahead and do the actual beveling um, and drilling the, drilling the holes for the, uh, the hinges and then bevel. Right. I like to drill the hinges first or to do cut hinges first before I do any beveling. It's just easier for me. Alright. Okie dokie. Alright, so we're gonna go basically right in to doing the uh, fin. Alright. So we got the rudder parts right here to include the um, 332nd half inch, 30 inch long. Uh, also rudder rib stock all right we got the blocks we got the actual balsa rudder plate here we're just gonna put all this to the side because our main concentration at the moment is going to be the actual fin we got this piece basically glued glue together This is not the fun part. Pretty much guys, if you built a top flight kit before, they pretty much all build the same. All right, as far as like the, um, the structure concern, the ribs, the horizontal stab, vertical uh, stabilizer, vertical fin, horizontal stab type deal. Uh, for the most part, they're all the same. Thin, pretty much sheeted all right just like such so we're gonna go ahead and start cutting off the tabs 
and this is the reason why we kind of outline the uh, tab location that way it's easier to go ahead and go ahead and uh, determine if uh, cutting out these lightning holes um, is even worth it all right so zero grams right now let me go ahead and place this on top so it's seven grams just for that piece of balsa all right so I'm gonna cut these out we're gonna go ahead and re-weigh it and see exactly how many it shed off all right here to see exactly how much we actually shaved off all right so two grams woohoo hey any gram is better than no gram right as far as taking off weight sweet all right then I guess it was worth it I guess all right guys I did this off camera all right there's nothing special about this or any you know difficult type deal uh, where it warrants having to really uh, spend all that time showing it to you all right so really quick uh, just basically gluing all the blocks to the actual rudder plate base plate gluing the base onto the rudder leading edge all right uh, self-explanatory of that and then from there just basically getting your um, your half inch 330 second stock balsa right and basically cutting to length uh, your ribs that's pretty much that all right so we got all this done I got the uh, top block thin tip already glued on there and so all this eventually is going to get uh, shaped all right and we can start shaping this now that way when we get this close to the shape we really need um, we can tape it on here and actually start um, finalizing the actual uh, airfoil of all this all right so that's pretty much the last step on this one really is uh it's just basically sanding your rudder to that bevel and as a matter of fact it shows right here in the cross section on the mat uh, the plans exactly how the bevel should look so it's technically just straight back really all right um, well like I said I'm gonna give it a little bit of a roundness at the end all right so that the covering material when it's ironed on uh, kind of droops and lifts you know in between the ribs giving that rib effect all right uh, yep so that's pretty much what I'm gonna do all right, guys. All right, getting the roughing in. So this is the roughing. All right, so we got that 
going on. You can see how it's round, little rounded off at the tip now instead of straight back. That should give a little bit of that raised look. Kill. Alrighty. stabilizer and elevator all right and I option to do the um, balancing tabs as you saw in the video now I didn't really go in depth in regards to doing that uh, I mean it's really self-explanatory just by following the uh, plans and, and just fitting in the wood you know your scrap wood and all that stuff in there and just making a box and stuff all right so uh, if you guys want to see the small things like that, put in the comments. Let me know. All right. Because sometimes you know the way I'm thinking is that it's a, um, a waste of time, you know, for the viewer uh, to really just sit down there and see me do the little stuff. All right. Um, that's just the way I'm thinking. I, I get some comments, you know, and, and I can't please everybody, guys. So um, uh, if I get a lot of people telling me that they want to see uh, a lot of the minor details, close-ups and stuff like that, and more explanation, uh, then I will start doing that on the next part of the video, alright? But if I get nothing, I'm just going to continue rolling the way I've been doing it, alright? Other than that, if you like the type of content that I'm you know, basically putting out here in the channel, go ahead and click that like, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. And if you are a subscriber to the channel, I surely appreciate you. All right. So I will see you in part two of the Top Flight P-51D Mustang Build Series. And we're going to basically start on the wing. All right, guys. See you then. Shoo-shoo!